is the real you, the one that no one else sees? What is your identity? The good news is that there is an answer to that question. And I think the answer might surprise you. Tonight, we'd like to share with you a story. Part of it comes right out of God's Word, the Bible. This is a drama that our Bible Institute students have been working on for the past five months, and they're very excited to share with all of you. We hope that you will enjoy it and give it your undivided attention. So, without further ado, the Word of Life Bible Institute drama team presents Who Are You, Esther? Esther, they're going to kill all of us. The king's decree says to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jewish people, young and old, women and children, and plunder their possessions on the 13th day of Adolf. Yes, I know, Uncle Mordecai, but what would you have me do? You are the queen. The king chose you from all the women in Persia. You must go to him and lead him for the lives of your people. You know as well as anyone that if I go and appear before the king uninvited, I'll be executed immediately unless he holds out his golden scepter. They're so mean, so cruel, Leah. It would be humiliating if they even knew that I went to church. Esther, those are our friends they are bullying. They are spreading lies because they are openly Christians. You can do something about it. Hey, I don't see why you need to get involved. I wasn't the one carrying around a Bible talking about Jesus, nor was the one who made a blind about them to get them in trouble. But you did see what happened, and you are the class president. And what exactly do you want me to do, Leah? Go tell the principal the truth. He trusts you. Oh, sure, Leah. Great idea. I'll just walk into his office and say, Oh, my king, dear husband of mine, I have disobeyed you by coming here to tell you that I'm one of the people your new law is supposed to kill. Will you please, oh, please stop being so mean? Esther. You know that's not what I meant. If you approach him respectfully, he'll you know, probably say nothing, and then I will die shortly after. You have to understand, Uncle Mordecai. There must be another way. Esther, this is our entire people we're talking about. I know what I'm asking is dangerous. Mordecai, but I'm the queen of the most powerful nation on earth. I can't just ignore the consequences of people thinking I'm one of them. I'm class president, team captain, and top of our class. I have big plans after graduation, and I'm not just going to risk everything I've worked for. Esther, what if it was me? What do you mean? What if I was the one they were spreading lies about, and I was about to be expelled? Would you stand up for me? I, I mean, that's different. You're like my sister. But that's the point. These are your brothers and sisters in Christ. They are family. They need you right now to stand up for them. No one else can do this. Don't you have this idea in your head that this is the only way, but it can't be. If I go to him and explain how I was a Jew and he chose Wait, me. Wait, what do you mean what a Jew? Well, I don't mean that I'm not a Jew. It's my heritage. You are a daughter of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin, part of God's chosen people. Well, Yes, but I'm so much more than that now. My heritage and my religion don't define who I am. It's my life, and I decide who Esther is. I make my own identity. You decide who you are? Of course. Esther, who taught you that? Taught me? Who taught you that? That you decide who you are. That you make your own identity. I mean, everyone knows that. It's just common sense. What if they told me that the Bible said that? Listen to what the scripture says. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, not we ourselves. We belong to him. We are a holy people belonging to the Lord our God. The Lord your God has chosen us to be his own possession out of all the peoples on the face of earth. Right now, you serve the king of Persia, but our God is king over all kings and Lord over all lords. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will not be destroyed. He is greater and more powerful than any king on earth. Esther, is Jesus your king? Leah, we live in a democracy. Yes, but you have chosen to trust Jesus to save you, right? I guess. A few years ago at camp, I asked Jesus to forgive me for everything that I've done wrong. Then you know that he paid for your sin, so you don't have to. He died instead of you, and rose again three days later. 
He gave everything so that you could spend eternity with him. Yeah, so I get to go to heaven, but what does that have to do with this? Life with Jesus lasts forever, and it starts right now. He has given you his spirit and has chosen you to represent him in this world. He has given you an identity, a hope, a purpose. But I already have an identity. I have a purpose. Look at me. I'm not wearing this because it's comfortable. Everyone on earth makes up their own identity or imagines that it was given to them. But who God says you are is greater, bigger, and more important than what you feel. What could possibly be more important than a queen? Babe, my dear, you feel like a queen, but if this is what you put your hope in, you will be greatly disappointed. Kingdoms rise and fall, men live and die, but the Lord our God never changes. You are who he says you are because he is who he says he is. You are defined by all his promises, shaped by every word he said. You are alive by the very breath he gave, sustained only by the mercy he gives. Do not forget who you are. You are much more than the Queen of Persia. You are the daughter of the Most High God, the creator of heaven and earth, the Alpha and Omega, the Lord of armies, the beginning and end. He has chosen you, and he loves you. Everything else about you will change or fade away, but who you are to God will last for all eternity. me for what? For many things. But most importantly, to represent him to a world that needs him. Leah, maybe you feel that way, but I'm no daughter of the Most High God. I'm not courageous. I'm not strong or smart enough to represent God. I'm not even sure that I'm a good person, okay? I'm selfish. I need attention. I'm afraid of being lonely and misunderstood. I do things that I don't want to do, and I don't do the things that I do want to do. My whole life, I've been just trying to have some measure of control, and I feel like I've finally gotten something right. I'm terrified that if I make a mistake here, then it'll all be for nothing. because you are worthy. He makes you worthy through his love. He knows you better than you know yourself, including your deepest hurts and darkest secrets. You are both fully known and fully loved. This is not about what you've done, but what's been done for you. And this is not about where you've been, but where your brokenness brings you to. This is not about what you feel, but what Jesus felt to forgive you, and what he felt to make you loved. He says you are loved when you can't feel a thing. He says you are strong when you think you are weak. He says you are held when you are falling short. He says you are mine, you are chosen, you are a child of God. You are who he says you are because he is who he says he is. You have a choice, Esther. You've always had a choice. Either trust yourself and your instincts, or trust the goodness of God and his plan. Choose to have an identity as his daughter and representative, or insist that you make your own way. I warn you, though, if you insist that God leaves you alone, that is exactly what he'll do. If you despise his love and abandon his ways, you will not see his promises or his protection. Don't think you'll escape the fate of all the Jews just because you are in the king's palace. If you keep silent at his time, relief and deliverance will come to the Jewish people from another place. But you and your father's family will be destroyed. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to your royal position for such time as this. Who are you, Esther? Who will you choose to be? 